Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Katie and I managed to find some little watercolour pencils. So in case you didn't know, Lidl is a German supermarket which we have over here in the UK and I know it's dotted a few other places around the world as well. I not so long ago did a video similar to this where I had a look at the Aldi watercolour pencils and I said then if I found any little supplies that I could compare them to I would give them a whirl. The Aldi ones were a 12 set and these are a 24 set and they also came with a paintbrush but I'm, I'm not using it because the paintbrush is a bit rubbish. So first impressions though, minus the paintbrush, is we've got a really nice selection of colours here and they went on the paper really well and they also dissolved quite nicely when I added the water to them. I used the Grumbacher mixed media paper for this, I thought seems as it was coloured pencil as well as a watercolour, then that's kind of mixed media in my eyes and I thought this would be better than using a watercolour paper just so the textures didn't get in the way and I just thought this was the right thing to do. I did have a look to see if Lidl had got any of their own sketch pads and papers. Unfortunately though, someone got there before me and snapped it up, so I'm not able to try that on this video. By the way, if you are relatively new here and you haven't seen the video where I test the Aldi watercolour pencils, I will leave that in the description or maybe on the end card, just so you can check that out. So to try this out I thought I would draw a nice little figure holding a plant and she's got fabulous long hair because I just I just needed to draw that. Now there's lots of different ways of using watercolour pencils however I tend to prefer to apply the actual coloured pencil to the paper and activate it that way. However you can use them by crushing the leads into a palette or scribbling them into a palette, adding the water and using them as a pre-mixed watercolour or you can lift them directly off the pencil with a wet brush and apply it straight to the paper. For me personally if I was going to do that I would probably use it for convenience whereas I'm at home and by my desk and I'll use them as a pencil rather than trying to emulate watercolour with it but to each their own as they say. I began by blending and ever so lightly layering the colours before activating with the water. I didn't press on very hard and I used the pencil on its side just so I would get a relatively even coverage. By partially blending them while they were dry and then finishing the job off whilst using a wet brush I hoped to achieve a little bit more of an even gradient. And so far so good, they're blending quite nicely, yes you still get a little bit of ghosting but that is to be expected if you're going to use watercolour pencils this way. Considering these cost me I believe $5.99, I don't mind if they ghost a little bit, for $5.99 I kind of expect it. Now I don't use watercolour pencils very often, especially on my videos just because of how time consuming it can be. I tend to get the most out of these materials by utilising the dual purpose of them being a colour pencil and a watercolour and it just takes a long time. One of the things I do like about watercolour pencils though and the principle behind them is how crisp you can get those lines. If you check out the negative space between the background and where the figure's face begins you can see how crisp that is and I really appreciate that with watercolour pencils. Sometimes I just can't be that neat using neat watercolours so they do have their benefits. But again though the colouring inside by just using them as a pencil can take forever. I'm sure you all know if you've really got into colouring using coloured pencils it can be time consuming. It's not a quick job. Now what I wanted to achieve here was I suppose an undercoat and by layering up the paints and then going over them with the pencils, reactivating them if I needed to or wanted to, I'd create something a little bit more vibrant without leaving too many white patches. Unfortunately this is where I kind of stopped enjoying using these. 
the colour selection was great and when I swatched them out they were beautiful and vibrant and they worked really well and having all them colours was great. However, I found it really hard work trying to keep blending in and getting the coloured pencils to behave once that first layer had gone down and I was going over it again. That vibrancy that wowed me to begin with, it was kind of coming short if I'd be really honest with you. Now again, you could argue that having a huge array of colours means I don't need to mix them and that's quite rightly so and if I was doing large areas of just blocks of colour and adding gradients and just doing that one layer, I'd probably be alright and I probably would have pressed on harder. However, when it came to layering up, it just felt like, I don't know, adding that extra layer on. It's like the, and I can't even blame the paper because I have used watercolour techniques on this paper before and it's been fine. It just felt like it just didn't want to get any more vibrant. And in some areas, I really was pressing down. I even broke the lead. And yeah, I, I just started to become a little bit disappointed with these. And, and that's hard for me to say because I, I actually don't mind some of the little supplies. I've put the paintbrushes up before and they've been absolutely fine. I've even had drawing materials, just like your HB pencils and charcoals. And I know that's not a preferred medium of mine, but for trying out, they've been fine. However, these watercolour pencils, oh, they, they, just, they were just a little bit lacklustre, if I be honest. And I felt like I was having to do twice as much work for something that could have been easily achieved by using perhaps a brand that you'd know for these, even if it was a student grade one. The only saving grace was the price and I suppose if you're a bit strapped for cash or if you're curious or if you want to prove to yourself I could make any material work then yeah go ahead the $5.99. However, with Christmas literally around the corner and you're wondering what to get your artist friend or family member, I'd probably ask them what brand they'd like and see if it's within your price range. Because if it's something they want to pursue, these are probably, they're probably not going to match their expectations of what this media is. I know when I use a medium for the first time and it doesn't matter whether it's a really expensive one or a really good value one and I do use un inexpensive art materials quite frequently. I always think, especially if it's sketch pad work or if it's practice, I ask myself am I enjoying using these and am I learning as I go along? For these, I didn't enjoy using them, it, it just felt like so much hard work and quite a little payoff for it as well. I guess I'm just thinking out loud here as I'm retracing and going over this. They swatched really nicely. I can't tell you how lovely and vibrant they were, but when it actually came to using them for a painting, it it was just, it. I didn't enjoy it. I'm sorry, I tried. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and the conclusion of my little, little haul. If you have enjoyed this video and want to watch some more, there should be a couple on screen for you to click on now. And before you do that, please make sure you subscribe if you haven't. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one. Bye.